I wanted to also do a review of this William Gibson book that I listened to, audiobooked it. And this is the first time I've actually been able to complete a William Gibson book. I've known about him for a long time. Like my dad gave him gave me a uh, copy of several of his books, including Neuromancer, when I was like 13, and I tried to read it, and I think I was just a little too young to enjoy it. But now I think I can handle it, and audiobooks, I don't usually do fiction, so this was good because this is nonfiction. It's a collection of his essays that he did over the years, at different points in his life for magazines, book introductions, things like that. And uh, I liked it a lot. It was good. Very... Uh, even though like a lot of the technology has changed that he's talking about, like early internet stuff, it's still very uh, incisive the way that he talks about them because it kind of reminds me of uh, Marshall McLuhan, the media theorist, in the way that he he looks at kind of the, the larger effects of these technologies and what they're doing. So even though like it's a bit dated and he's not always 100% accurate, he's still very... Uh, relevant because it's still things that we are dealing with and sometimes I'm amazed at how uh, able he was to look ahead and see what where these things were going. He covers a, a huge range of topics from history, technology, film, music, kind of the perspectives of these emergent technologies and how they they affect us. Like I said, like M McLuhan and like kind of the the effects on human psychology which I love. So. Um, it's perfect for an audiobook if you do want to check out in that format. I may check out some of his fiction. I've, like I said, I've never been able to finish one of his books, but I think maybe I'm old enough now. I did try audiobooking one, but I don't think I'm I can really handle audiobook fiction. So I'm gonna go back and give that a shot. He's nonfiction though is a good format for him because he it really allows him to kind of cut to the the gist of the uh, kind of the poetics of what he's trying to get at rather than included in this narrative, but maybe I'll like its fiction too. I may either start with Neuromancer or his most recent, The Peripheral. This book also kind of paints a good picture of why he's hard to classify as a straight science fiction writer, because his influences, like a lot of them are people like William Burroughs and J.G. Ballard, who sometimes are classified as science fiction, but I think they're more experimental authors that kind of are interested in human psychology, and that's what, what Gibson is really good at. What I appreciate most from this book, though, is how he takes things that are familiar to us that we use every day, but kind of re-examines them, even like very mundane things, and just uh, forces you to say, oh, wow, this is something that I've, I'm using so often that I don't even consider the, the psychological consequences of doing this all the time. So I, it really is like a step back. And like I said, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that Marshall McLuhan didn't live to see the internet, but I feel like with uh, people like William Gibson, we kind of can see what he would have thought. And that's kind of a, a, a bit of a overstep maybe, but I, I think we can say that like Gibson is probably the closest thing to Marshall McLuhan that we have nowadays. One of the greatest concepts that, I, that he talks about in the book, uh, Gibson has this term he calls the garage Kubrick after uh, Stanley Kubrick, which is basically this person who's able to work from within their garage to make, like for example, an entire movie uh, without any actors or any other talent, just completely on their own. And when he was writing about it, I think it was like the late 90s, it was still kind of some uh, futuristic idea that hadn't been realized, but nowadays, I mean, we have a million Garage Kubricks. Everybody's making their own music, their own uh, movies, books, etc., without any other assistance. It's totally possible to make an animated movie nowadays on your own. You're doing all the voices, all the animation, and it's it's kind of amazing how quickly that concept came into being. So, like I said, there's tons of ideas like this that it's very rich with ideas, and I think. <clears throat> Even the, the older essays, you'll get something out of because he also comments on the essays and is not afraid of uh, laughing at himself. So when he talks about doing Alta Vista searches, you know, how quickly Google kind of overtook Alta Vista and other search engines. So it's kind of an interesting artifact from uh, another era, and I think it holds up very well and you'll enjoy it. So check it out if you've never tried William Gibson. It's a good place to start.